Given this is her area of expertise, she, we asked her to come join us for today's presentation. Um, how many of you, first before I begin the presentation, how many of you are aware or use Pasio? <laughs> so I think you're aware that, um, uh, so you're aware of our a range of products. Is, you know, we, we offer products from tissues to bathrooms and kitchen towels and wet tissues, but what you may not know, and what, what, we, what we love about the brand is that it is certified safe for your skin, for your food, and for the environment. And, and this is something that is really important to us. And, and just to take a step back, Pasio is really part of a bigger family. Um, it's um, a, one of the products produced by APP. And, and let me introduce my Singapore team. <laughs> Um, they're here to make sure that the that the products get into the stores and in your hands. Um, but so back to APP, it's one of the largest uh, pulp and paper producers, delivering tissues, papers, packaging to uh, 120 um, countries and six continents. And it's actually through their uh, zero deforestation commitment that we're able to Pasio is able to really. Um, help with tackling the climate change. So for many of you who raise your hands, thank you for joining us and really looking to um, protect the environment. So with that, I'm going to pass it on to this um, presentation to Nagla. We'll talk to you about, uh, give you a little bit of information about uh, our commitment, the zero deforestation commitment. Um, and then the Singapore team will talk about how what this means to you and how you can get involved, okay? Thank you, Christina. My voice is not as nice as the previous <laughs> as the previous um, presenter. Um, hi, my name is Negla. I'm from um, the as Christina mentions. I'm from the Asia Pulp and Paper, the corporate office in Jakarta. So Paseo is one of our premium brands, um, which is a tissue made from virgin fiber. So. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of concerns from the general public about how we use tissue, how environmentally um, friendly it is to use a tissue that comes from a virgin fiber instead of a recycled materials. So I'm going to go through um, a bit about where we got our uh, our um, our roots because obviously tissue comes from pulp, pulp comes from roots. And also I'm going to um, highlight a bit about what's the difference, what's the benefit of you using um, the uh, tissue made from uh, protein fiber as opposed to the tissue that, made, that is made from uh, the recycled materials. Tissue. Tissue industry is always has a lot of uh, issues in the past, even currently, about where the, the woods come from. As it comes from the deforestation, I'm sure you heard a lot Greenpeace and WWF campaigning about the use of tissue that comes from sustainable sources. What do they mean by sustainable sources? It basically, the, wood, um, the tissue has to come from the wood that is not a result of the deforestation. So the wood has to come from a sustainable plantation. So um, this is actually the um, you know the concerns of APP as a tissue producer also. So that's why in February 2013. We launch what we call as our forest conservation policy. So this is to mean um, this is meant for to end all natural forest clearance throughout our entire supply chain. So to give you a background, APP in Indonesia we have 
a concession area. Concession area means that the government gave us uh, a license to manage this area into production area. So um, it's 2.6 million hectares. So it's a really huge, huge area. So we need to maintain it very well. So um, from the one point, uh, sorry, 2.6 million hectares, we have committed 40% of it is set aside for conservation purpose, for social and community purpose for the people who live within the forest area, and also for um, the, what we call the cultivation of local wood species. So, um, and then you, uh, and then people will ask, well, plantation obviously comes from previously was not plantation, right? Previously in the area, it might be an open land or it might be natural forest. Um, there are several steps that we did before we uh, we develop a plantation. So, you know, we want to know whether if I develop a plantation here, it will impact negatively to the um, to the environment around it. So, whether it will impact to the community and so on. And after we made this this kind of um, assessment, and then finally we can um, actually uh, develop the plantations. Public plantations in Indonesia. So. With this, um, actually with this 2013 commitment, APP is committed all the suppliers will not, uh, will not, what do you call it, um, open, open land again for, um, to make a plantation. So right now, um, all of our supplies come from our established plantation. There is currently no more new plantations being, uh, being opened by APP and its suppliers. <clears throat> so, then how, how do we get sustainable supplies if we only comes from the same plot of land? Actually, what we did is a bit similar with how you, do, how you grow your crops. You know, um, your sugars come from sugar cane that is being harvested and replanted in the same spot, right? Your corns, your rubber, you know, things like that. Same thing with wood plantation, same thing with pop, um, you know, the wood that we use for tissue and paper. So our area in Indonesia, we can plant uh, pulpwood species that can be harvested in five to six years. So this is much, much quicker <coughs> than, for example, uh, the pulpwood species that is planted in temperate climate, which probably can take around 20 years before it can be harvested. So it's very rapid growth rapid turnover in terms of our plantation. So what we do in our um, our concession area is that we, in one in one block of area, we um, separate the area into six, what we call it, six compartments, let's say. So the first year, we, uh, we plant in one compartment. Second year, we plant in the next one. Third year, in the next one. So every year, we will have one compartment to harvest and one compartment to plant. So this is how we uh, make sure that we will have a sustainable uh, supply to our materials. So this is to make it easier, um, comparison it's a bit similar with the way you replant your crops uh, for your supply. <clears throat> so how, uh, how, we, um, how we do this, uh, how we ensure um, that our forest conservation policy will have good impacts for our environment, is through these four critical opportunities that we need to uh, we need to make. Which is the first one is obviously zero deforestation, no longer cutting natural forests to make uh, to develop our public plantations. So the impact is we better conserve natural forests and we uh, secure reliable supply to our raw materials. Second thing is peatland management. I'm not sure if you are um, if you are um, you know familiar what we call peatland. Pitland is basically a type of soils that is made with a lot of content of organic materials that stores a lot of carbon. So it's basically, if it's not managed well, it will release a lot of greenhouse gases emissions, contribute to the climate change and such. So this one really needs to be managed well. And uh, pitland is also one of the area that, you know, um, very prone to fire if it's not managed well. So. Uh, pitland management, we are committed to work together with a lot of pit experts to find out what is the best practice to manage pitland in tropical climate because it's different characteristics. So the impact is to help reduce the CO2 emissions and preserve a lot of uh, habitat for many endangered animals because in Indonesia, the pit, uh, pit soil is actually you know, the habitat of a lot of uh, 
endangered and uh, what do you call it? local species. Community empowerment. Community empowerment, as I mentioned, um, in forest, there's actually a lot of people living there. So it's not around the forest, it's within the forest itself. So whatever you do in the forest, in the forest area, it will have impact to them. So what we are committed is that we are going to do what we call the free, prior, and informed consent. So before a new activity is being done in the area, we need to socialize it to the community. We need to get their consent that they understand what is going on, how, will, how it will impact them, and how they can contribute to the activity. So only after the community in the area, they give the consent, and then we can actually move on to the activity to develop the area. The fourth one is about responsible suppliers. It's easy for APP to, um, to, what they call it, to maintain uh, how our local suppliers are uh, working, but we also uh, import a lot of fiber. Because in Indonesia, we can only grow short fibers. Um, the public type is only short fibers. When you are making paper, when you are making tissue, you need what we call long fibers to tie everything together to make like one paper, one tissue. So this long fiber is can only grow in the temperate climate. So that's why we need to import this long fiber from places like the US, Canada, Europe, and so on. So how do we know, how do we make sure that this fiber that I import from the US, that I import from Canada, is actually comes from sustainable materials. It doesn't come from deforestation and so on. So it's, uh, we only, uh, our way to do it is that we only import certified materials. Probably you've heard about FSC. I think that's the most um, the certification that most people is um, you know familiar with. And then the other one is PEFC. And then there's also a lot, a lot of um, what do you call it? A lot of um, local certification that ensures the forestry um, is managed uh, sustainably. So this is the four um, critical opportunities that we identify that um, to make the biggest impact in our effort to save, um, to protect the environment. So we are also collaborating with NGOs, governments, sustainability, group, sustainability groups to strengthen our FCP. So we work with the Forest Trust, we work with um, Rainforest Alliance, so they do um, assessment on our work and then they, they identify which area that we still need to uh, improve, which is denoted by these nine items here. So forestry is a very, very complex business. It's not as easy as you're seeing a forest, and then whether it's a decision to just leave it or you know utilize it. It's, there's a lot of management efforts that going in there. <clears throat> because many people think, oh, if you want to conserve, you just like set aside, just leave the area um, and let it, let it be. But that's not, that's not the issue, because the issue is the illegal logging, the issue is the people around the area who might be too poor to actually, um, they don't have um, stable, stable income, so they, um, they have to utilize, they, they open the land to plant crops illegally and, and such. But it's actually done because of the economical pressure. So that's, um, that's a lot of management that um, we need to, uh, to take into account how to address that kind of, um, that kind of issue also. So it's not really a black and white issue about the forestry. Um, another thing is that APP, uh, in APP we are also supporting the protection and the restoration of 1 million hectares of forest across Indonesia. So this is a very, a very bold initiative. Um, this one, um, we have come up with the support from WWF and Greenpeace also. So this is an in, uh, sorry, in ten separate landscape across um, the Sumatra Island and also in the uh, Kalimantan Islands. So one million, what, what we are doing in the 1 million hectares is um, basically conservation and restoration. Um, the conservation also includes the biodiversity, not only the uh, conservation of the area itself, but also the animals and such that live within it. And then um, how, how do we get this, um, this, um, the funds to do it? Because um, this is a very huge um, undertaking. You need like millions of dollars to actually manage 
just this one million hectare, never mind the other millions of hectare that Indonesia forest needs. So um, we have the CSR fund, we have um, some cost-related markings, some uh, donations from our partners and also from external resources. So what does all of, all of I just talk about? <laughs> How does this mean to you? Just like um, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, my name is Jeffrey and I'm the marketing manager for Singapore. So I'll take over from this point. I hope um, what my colleagues have presented, um, you have been wide awake this day because there's going to be some brief data and we can bring some of our products back. Okay. <laughs> so do listen up. Yeah, and uh, stay alert. Alright, um, probably another 10 more minutes. Okay, um, so what does it actually all mean to you? Um, this is our product commitment fundamentally. Uh, we have a tree to tissue journey that we are probably uh, quite fond of speaking about. Fundamentally, what we are saying is from every point, from a tree all the way to when you get it back home, you are able to track how the entire process is being done so that it's sustainable as we have it today. Right? So the entire chain of custody is actually quite quite straightforward, you know, all the way from the nursery, all the way to uh, the plantation, how we do it, how we um, lock the plantation, then down to even harvesting it, um, transporting it. So transport also, for most people, is CO2 emission, but we are doing it carefully so that we don't affect the environment, okay, and also the landscaping. Um, thereafter, uh, we store it, and then we do paper manufacturing, and finally, we Customize it to whatever little products that you see in the supermarkets or where you buy your products from. Right? So, because of our strict um, management of the chain of custody, it also means that no illegal wood is actually used in that entire process. So, at every point, we know where this wood comes from. Yeah, and that's our commitment to help to save the environment, basically. Alright? Okay. Okay, and secondly, our product commitment is fundamentally that the products are safe for both your skin and the food. Okay, what you all be thinking, huh? Safe for skin and food. So, we only use virgin pulp. So, I, I give you all a little bit of uh, knowledge here. When you go to the supermarket later on this week or whatever, when you do your grocery buy, you'll notice that actually there's this group of paper that's called virgin pulp. 100% virgin pulp. Some of them claim mixed pulp, and then some of them don't right, say anything. Now the difference between each of these is fundamentally the 100% virgin pulp paper, which Paseo, what we are doing, is um, without chemicals, uh, they are bad for the skin. So we are quite sure that, you know, like you don't add optical brightening agent, OBA, okay, or um, other materials that is actually bad for the skin. Yeah, that's how we can claim certain things like hypoallergenic on our products and things like that. Okay, so the mixed pulp is a mixture of both. The price will be lower. And then you go down one more step, which is the recycled materials. Okay, so in order to get recycled materials uh, good for use, quite a fundamental a lot, I mean fundamentally quite a lot of chemicals are being injected in the process so that it removes away the ink from my existing paper, blah blah blah, to make it actually good for the usage. Alright? Okay? So that's the fundamental difference. When we talk about 100% virgin pulp, okay, we don't add all the chemicals, unlike the recycled pulp. Yeah, so it's a bit of a shape shifter if you think about it. I mean, before joining the company, I also had the con concept that all oh, recycled materials are actually good. There's always a very thin line at the end of the day because you think it's good because you are not logging more. But on the other hand, it's actually bad because you are adding a lot of chemicals to it. So that's my fundamental understanding. And just to add, is we, and, and this is very specific for the type of paper you use for skin and for food, is we, as part of APP, we absolutely believe in recycled paper, but we use it for our packaging or papers that you write with at school, but it's not for face and hand. So there, there's, so it's, it's only, um, it, so the, this comparison of recycled pulp versus virgin pulp is as it relates to tissue and your skin and your food. 
Right. So they're both great, but for different reasons. Correct. So it boils down to the usage itself. Yeah. Can, I, can I also add to them? Because um, there are some people um, probably was not really uh, aware that how many times um, a fiber a, a, a fiber can be recycled? It's very limited. Six times you cannot use it anymore. So so using um, even though you use a recycled material, you still also need um, a supply of virgin fibers because that's the new fiber, the stronger one that ensures that the quality is better. So um, what we say is that, like um, like Christina just said, we, it's not that recycled is it's bad because we do produce a lot of recycled. We have two mills that only produce recycled products, but it's only for cartons, for packaging, for paper, but not for hygienic not for hygienic products, which is issue, uh, which is issue, essentially. <laughs> which is issue, and any paper that we use for um, food container, because it, because obviously it touch the food, so it has to be for fiber. So the issue is, again, um, recy uh, recycled pulp, it still needs, um, it still needs a constant supply of newer pulp, because you cannot, only six times you can recycle the same fiber. So again, back to the beginning, the um, the concern, um, the, the main issue is how you make sure that these products use um, virgin fibers that comes from good sources, that comes from sustainable sources. Okay, so that's point two. <laughs> All right. Now then, what what happens? Okay, uh, fundamentally, uh, we do have because you know of our establishment as a company. We do have very strict standards such as ISO 22000, right, which is uh, guaranteed that the products are safe for your food. Um, you can find this when you're actually purchasing our kitchen towel, for example. I mean, who uses kitchen towel when you use kitchen towel is fundamental because you know you're trying to either um, dry the food or uh, take away the oil. Okay, so our products are all absorbent, it's high absorbency, but more fundamentally, it's food safe. Yeah, that means if you place your food there when you eat it, you're not going to worry that, oh, I'm taking in chemicals and things. Yeah, and it all boils down to the proposition that we have this virgin pulp, we don't add chemicals in Okay? Yeah. It is optical brightening agent. Okay, um, it's a kind of chemical that you add in order to try to make a product look whiter. Yeah, we don't add those in. Um, and it also means that it's 100% hypoallergenic to your skin. So when you use our tissue paper, you have that sense of guarantee that you know, you're not going to have skin irritation because of our promise to you. Okay? Right. Um, and we are also working in Singapore. I think everyone is quite familiar with this logo. You know when I was in school, it started for the day. Yeah, um, we've been working with uh, SEC and uh, fundamentally uh, we, our products are certified uh, with the green label for Singapore. Uh, I mean, this has been a... Uh, how many years has this been, this label? Yeah, so it's quite a long time and, um, you know, our products are all certified and it's, it's a good label. I mean, it fundamentally educates the consumer that the product is being produced in a sustainable way. Okay? Yes? Okay, for example, the, um, the, 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 the paint, you know where you put in the paint, it will not, when the water goes out, it will not harm the animals and everything. Because I, you might see also as this green label. Yeah, I, I, I don't come from UIC, maybe I, I direct the question to our SEC officer. What does that mean when there's a green label in Singapore? You can let me know. That's my question. Yeah, uh, the green label scheme, right, actually. The green labeling scheme actually uh, certifies uh, both the product as well as the packaging. So uh, the company, for example, you are see, they come to us every year, they have to review it every year. Uh, and then they will uh, go through certain audit processes and have certain criteria to fit that green label uh, uh, certification. So that means that uh, they have to probably fulfill uh, like the amount of chemicals that they have inside. There will be like, some limit to it. So that doesn't really have that. Because there's some like uh, it's, it's not this label, but you know, you know it's it's very good for the environment, it's still yeah. there. Some of them have other labels as well. 
Oh, jolly and nice. Uh, jolly and nice are our other brands as well. You're right. Okay. Um, they are produced in the same manner, but it's a different grade of people. Yeah. Okay. They are still premium and they are still 100 percent virgin coffee. Okay. Yeah. For our tissue paper products within the brands, we are all 100 percent virgin. Yeah, and all sustainably sourced. Okay, uh, so in summary, this is our commitment to you, Singapore, to our consumers, right, uh, and our environment, obviously. Okay, uh, we are sustainably made from plantation fibers that are responsibly managed. Okay, so we are green label certified. Okay, we are 100% natural pulp, free from harmful chemicals such as optical agent. Okay, we are hypoallergenic, suitable for sensitive skin. All right, we are premium quality, soft, strong, absorbent, and ISO 22000 certified safe. Okay, so remember this slide. This question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously, if you look at the products, then you see all the icons that we have, yeah, which is quite different from competitors. Okay. okay. Something interesting that we are getting you to participate to help educate the younger generation. And all of you are great educators. So, um, from this program, uh, we actually are working with SCC and we have started this Eco Gardener Award contest uh, that we're launching in primary and secondary schools. Okay, um, I believe that the booklet has gone out already for the schools. Okay, and part of the information for this contest uh, is already embedded in the booklet itself. But just let me very quickly talk through this, okay? We want the kids to actually understand the importance of sustainable forestry, okay? And it, to give them the concept that what is sustainable forestry, which is also the idea of farming. Okay, so primary and secondary school students are all invited uh, into the contest to grow and build food their school gardens. Now, I know that the schools have been very active in doing gardens to teach kids as part of their science uh, curriculum. So, uh, what we are trying to get you to do is to get your students to plant new or existing, cultivate your existing gardens the way it is. Some of the schools I've seen, even like my nephew and nieces, their gardens are superb. So, preferably you compost, okay, then what you do is to be creative. Just design a signboard, right, that says Eco Gardener. So, you have number one, you have to design a signboard. How you do it, it's all up to the kids to be creative. Okay, we don't want to limit their creativity. Obviously, I'm not going to spill what is the judging criteria, but we are looking for creativity and obviously how well they can adapt that whole concept of being green into the garden itself. Okay, um, then take selfies. I think nowadays kids love taking selfies, uh, teachers yourself as well. Take really nice selfies of yourself working up. Uh, working hard on the garden with your kids, all right, all the students, okay, and then uh, take photos showing like a progression of where you have been or when you are doing stuff. Just very interesting photos to actually show us how much the kids are enjoying the whole process. Okay, so come October, uh, which uh, will coincide with SGA audits, we'll be going around the schools to do their audits. Then we'll actually start the Eco Gardener of Singapore audit. 
the same time. Okay, and fundamentally, what we need is for you or your students, I and mean, then guide the students to help them to post whatever pictures that you have done into a collage. All right, creatively do it up nicely. You know, post it onto our Plasio Facebook. Okay, and then uh, we will then do a judging criteria. So there's two aspects. One is the photo. Okay, so there's the signboard. You have to take a nice photo with the signboard. Two, you have to take photos of your progression. And then three is to get a kid, uh, your student, to write an essay that is about why being green is important. I think this part of a closing loop to let them understand the whole process, why they are doing things, not just because of taking pictures or doing the planting, but really to. And I'm sure you guys are uh, inculcating that, that understanding into the kids, which is really teach them why being green is important. Mm -hmm. And we leave them to be creative about their writing. I know there's distinction. We are not going to judge uh, the primary with the secondary. You know, the primary kids will be all judged separately from the secondary. So there will be two awards being presented. Okay? Um, anyone has question on this contest? Yeah. Yeah, correct. Uh, just me. We are really, really hoping that you will drive your students to actually participate. You mentioned the booklet that's gone out to schools, is it? Yes. You uh, sent it that's out. That's my understanding from SSC. Uh, it's actually gone out to primary schools. So um, this year we haven't printed any more secondary schools, but we've created one which is online. So if you don't have the, the booklets, you can go online to use them. Oh, this is the Green Awards booklet? Yes. Oh, okay. 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 So then. Following on the timeline, we'll do final deliberation, the judging uh, over the period of 15 October to 30 October. Uh, and again, to rehash the evaluation criteria, the most successful garden, okay, um, you know, uh, the change in progression, we are looking for the kids to get involved to deliver that progression. The most creative garden signage, and the most thoughtful one page essay. So every submission needs to come with these elements. Okay, your the student that you have uh, decided on to write the essay, it can be a group effort, it can be a one-person effort, I leave it to the schools to decide. Yeah. We are not trying to clamp in too much um, restrictions and stuff, because at the we want the kids to have fun. Yeah. So, uh, we are really looking forward to very creative um, posts from all of the schools. Uh, I mean, today, in the age of today, Everyone is doing things very differently. Taking photos, doing collages, even posting videos. I think those are things that will help the teach, to teach the kids to learn better the, the topic that we're talking about. And we purposely kept um, the question, this, the essay broad is, you know, what does being green mean? It, there's so many things it can mean. And I think this is an opportunity for you to have a really great, you know, classroom discussion with your kids. It can be about family. Know, this future generation. You know, it doesn't have to be just about the planting itself, but really let them be creative about what green means to them. It can be very personal, it can be about the friends, it can be about the society, it can be literally about what green is and the things that you do to be green. So just really, we're really looking for a broad range of thinking around green and just from a kid's perspective too. We, we would love to read it and we're excited to get that. Yeah, and obviously the most exciting bit after, well, the whole process is exciting, but the, the end is uh, on November 5th, we'll do an award ceremony. So more details, we will get uh, SEC to help us to feed to the schools, but there will be an uh, award ceremony with prizes, um, and we will then announce the winning school and maybe get you to do a simple presentation of what you've done, something like that. All right? Okay, and it's on November 5th, just before the school holidays uh, comes in. So I think it will be a nice way to end off the year for everybody. Okay. Alright, now the exciting part. And I'm going to get um, my exec to help me. Uh, okay, uh, so I'll be asking questions. Um, and then... Oh, wait, sorry. Uh, for any more information you are looking for, Paseo and our Zero Deforestation Commitment, please go to our Facebook, okay, like us on our Facebook, um, go to our website, we have a website, paseo.com.sg, okay, 
and also as you are walking the shops, you actually will see some of all this um, information found on our products as well. Okay? Okay, Chris. Okay. Um, it will be quite challenging, but I will need, if I ask the question, the first person that raised their hand, okay, I will let you answer. And if you answer correctly, you get a, a little gift from us, okay? Alright. Uh, I'm glad you help me to help Okay. <laughs> okay, the first question. What are Paseo products made from? Uh, the lady in white, yeah. alright? 100% virgin palm. Okay. Uh, 100% virgin palm. Uh, tell me a little bit more about where the palm comes from. Uh, the palm comes from the Indonesia um, uh, plantation. Okay, what's unique about the plantation? Mm, it is uh, sustainable. Very good. Okay. So <laughs> it's a sustainable palm wood plantation. Thank you. Alright, question number two. What is OBA? Uh, the lady is black and white. Yeah. Optical brightening agent. Optical brightening agent, well done. Okay. Alright, the third question. How is Paseo food safe? Hmm. You can write an essay on this. <laughs> yeah. How is Paseo food safe? Um, I need a prompt of what is the certification that we have to make us food safe. I mentioned it quite a few times. Yeah. Anyone can remember the number? Uh, gentlemen? ISO? Yes, ISO 22000. Okay? All right. And we are actually compliant with the US FDA standards as well. Okay, so we have done through all the necessary audits to get ourselves compliant. Okay, question number four. We are like agricultural farmers because fill in the bank. Anybody? Uh, the lady in white? Okay, um, we divide the crop into six. The year one, we got the plant fixation, the first one. Year two, we do the second, year two, we do the third, and so on. So that at the year, we harvest one plant and we plant another. Okay, very good. She gave a very detailed answer. Thank you. Yeah, fundamentally, we use our safe land over the time period of time. Yeah, it's almost like farming. Okay, question number five. This one is related to me. Okay, I want to know if you are very aware about this. Where can you find our products at? Three retailers. Just someone, maybe three retailers in Singapore, they can find our products. The lady in blue? And do you see? Two more? You need three in order to get the prize. Uh, and do you see? Storage. Cold storage, good. One more? Giant. Giant, well done. <laughs> yeah. Any supermarket. You'll be able to find our products in all the major retailers in Singapore. Uh, we've been in the market for quite a fair amount of time. So, whether is it the bathroom tissue, the facial tissue, kitchen towel, hanky, wet wipes, I don't know, our brand carries across all the different products. Okay. Now, a little bit something for everyone. Um, because of us coming here and you spending time with us, um, we are willing to actually craft out a little uh, special prize for the schools. So what's going to happen is um, on on ground we actually have an order form, right? So these prizes are really really competitive, and uh, we would like you to actually just fill up the form. If you could ask your colleagues around the school uh, to take in the order. Right, and taking the order, um, there's details here fundamentally. Uh, you take the order and then you submit it. Send an email with the completed form to my colleague uh, Desmond and um, Alice, which is within this form itself. Okay, and then um, we will send the order to the school. So if you could help us be the coordinator. Okay, but the prices are really good uh, that we have crafted out for you. And fundamentally, we just want you to try our product. So, so we didn't tell you the discount. It's very big. It's thirty percent. Yeah. Okay. Thirty percent. Twenty-one percent. So um, there are a range of five, six different products. Okay, so it cuts across the different uh, tissue products that we have. So um, just take the order, mail it in. All right. Um, we have the forms and hard copy here. You can grab a copy. At the same time, um, 
our uh, SEC partners will actually help us to mail out to all of you through your email. So you can also fill out the form and then um, the details are within the form who to mail to uh, to help us also to be environmental in the same line. Um, also there's a minimum uh, order because if the order is too small then we are using a lot of transport to do it. So help us collect the orders. All right, we've been getting orders from the first batch of t-shirts already. So uh, this round we'll send out. Um, feel free to order. Okay, if you have any queries, um, there's also names and uh, contact details within the form. You can just call the person. Okay? Okay, and that comes to the end of my presentation. Uh, on behalf of my entire team, we thank you for your time and thank you for listening and appreciating uh, okay, uh, I'm going to be a little embarrassed in saying this, but actually I prepared uh, little samples for everyone to take away. But we were quite... When I came in, I saw the group, I said, wow. Um, last round, it wasn't so, so big group. But um, I would appreciate if everyone, if there are duplicate schools, uh, I mean, duplicate participants here from the same school, maybe you could just take one and share. Okay? So, we're going to go on. There's a breakdown uh, on your way out. Maybe you could just pick a, pee, uh, a pack of the tissue paper for one. Alright, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so forms and tissue. How should we do this? So he's taking a short 15 minutes break before we come back uh, for Starhub's talk as well as the application process for SMU. Thank you. Same school, same school. Alright, if they are extras, then I'll give you the same school. It's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's okay, same school. Oh, same school. Same school. <laughs>